What's going on everybody? It's your boy J Main back checking in with the people and the Xbox E3 press conference just got over not too long ago and I'm here to give y'all my review. Let's get into it. A lot to talk about um, from Scorpio to the games, the price, everything. It's just a lot to get into. So I'm gonna get into it right now. Right off the bat, they came out with the reveal of the Xbox One X console, formerly known as Project Scorpio. Now, if you listen to my predictions, Xbox One X was actually a name that I heard a couple months ago. And I was like, I actually kind of like that name because of the acronym XBOX. And it's, you know, the Xbox name and it's going back to form. So they actually went with Xbox One X. A lot of people say it might be confusion between S and X, possibly. But we'll, we'll see that. We'll see what happens going forward. But they showed the console, the name. It's actually the smallest Xbox ever. To me, it looks like this one of the smallest consoles I've ever seen. For it to be packing all that power and to be that small, even smaller than the PS4 Pro, I think that's an amazing feat. And the console is black. It looks great. One of my favorite looking consoles probably of all time. Um, it's launching November 7th. So I think I predicted sometime in November, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like they're going to be going with November 7th. So a little bit of a iffy launch time there because a lot of the big third party exclusives come out October. I guess you could say some are going to come out in November. I think like Star Wars Battlefront and Call of Duty. So I guess that's kind of like in the thick of things um, that, you know, they're going with. Uh, Xbox One X, the name, we got the price. What else we got here? Then they got into the games. Forza 7 Motors, Forza Motorsport 7 was the first game that they showed. It's coming out October 3rd. Excuse me, October 3rd. Now, this game looks goddamn amazing. Um, it's running 4K 60, all the bells and whistles, you know, taking full power of the Xbox One X. And I mean, GT Sport compared to this game, it's not even close. They need to go back to the drawing board with GT Sport because Forza 7 blows that game out the goddamn water. This game looks good. I'm not big into the simulation racers, but I can't deny how amazing this goddamn game looks. Um, next up, they showed Metro Exodus. Um, I played the first, I think the Metro game from last gen. I got to go back and finish it, but this new one looks pretty good. It's coming out 2018, so not exclusive. Moving on. Assassin's Creed Origins. Couldn't wait to see this game. This game looks phenomenal. You can tell that the, took off, the time they took off for this game really is paying off. It's not the same, you know, tower formula of the old Assassin's Creed games. It kind of has a Witcher vibe to it, which I'm cool with because Witcher is a great damn game. But it has that Witcher vibe to it. And it's not the same old Assassin's Creed that you, you know, known previously. The game looks good. Uh, it's on Microsoft stage. So I can't wait to see more of that. Uh, Player Unknown's Battleground is going to be console launch exclusive. Now, that's the thing I want to talk about. They were using a lot of tricky terminology at this conference. They went from uh, console launch exclusive to console exclusive to Xbox, Windows 10 exclusive. It was all different types of definitions of exclusive. Now, in my opinion, the only true exclusives there, well, I mean, if you don't have a PC, are the console exclusives. Um, but the console launch exclusives are, to me, time exclusives. They are mostly games that are coming from PC or, you know, games that are first to console and they're going to be first on Xbox One. That's cool and all, but we're going to see those games on other platforms. So, you know, they came out and talked about how they had like 40 some odd games to show and 20, 20 some odd of them were console exclusives. A lot of those were like console launch exclusives where they're going to be on other platforms, just not at launch. So it was it was a little iffy there with me. Um, they showed a whole bunch of stuff like uh, Darwin Project, um, Black Desert Online, which is big on PC, The Last Night, uh, Cold Vein, which is a game that they showed. It was during a segment where Phil Spencer talked about his trip to Japan. So it was nice to see him show what he did over there. He brought uh, a couple games from you know big Japanese developers over to the Xbox and that's dope to see because that's kind of one area that they're lacking is the JRPG the Japanese support on Xbox I know um in the past Xbox gamers haven't really supported it but it's nice to see that Phil Spencer cares enough to still try and bring those games and try and get people on board with it because you, you're gonna miss out on some great games if you don't have that Japanese support it's, it was evident at the beginning of this year with Nero Automata, Neo and all, Persona, all these great games that came out that the Xbox gamers can't experience. Um, they also talked about Minecraft, Unified Play, so if every platform pretty much other than PlayStation can all play together online. They talked about the Super Duper Graphics update, which 
you know, it, it's Minecraft, so it's running in 4K on Xbox One X and, you know, all that graphics talk. It's Minecraft. I don't give a damn about that game. <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. It's like a 2.5D Dragon Ball game fighting. Looks goddamn amazing. I mean, this was probably one of my favorite games of the show. It has that Guilty Gear type art style and like, you know, fighting combat, but it was just action packed. Your favorite Dragon Ball Z characters. And I'm not really big on fighting games, but I actually might get into this. Dragon Ball is my, one of my favorite animes of all time. So I might, I might give this a try. It looks goddamn good though. Um, what else do we have here? Sea of Thieves. Another game, while I respect, um, it's not for me. Um, the pirate ships, the open water combat, like, it's cool and all. I like to do it, like, in Assassin's Creed, but a game specifically designed around that, that's just too much for me. Um, they showed a lengthy gameplay trailer where they were going through and, you know, trying to go from ship to ship and get treasure and stuff like that. I didn't really care for it. What was the most interesting thing to me was that this game is actually not coming out until early 2018. So no 2017 for uh, Sea of Thieves. And I thought that was interesting. I thought this would be a game coming out because of how slim the 2017 first party lineup has been for Xbox One this year. I mean, other than Halo Wars 2 Retail, you had Voodoo Vents and uh, Phantom Dust, which was an Xbox OG Xbox remaster. It's not even really, it's just a port, up res port. So I thought, you know, they're going to try and get all the games they showed last year at E3 out this year because that's kind of been their formula. But no, Sea of Thieves is actually not coming out until next year, early 2018. Oh, Cuphead was on display. And about damn time, we got Cuphead coming out 2017 on September 29th. I can't wait for that. I've been, my eyes been on that game since they first showed it. I know it's been delayed because they had to go back and do uh, actual levels in the game and it's not just a, a boss fight game, which I would have been cool with. To me, it looked amazing as just a boss fight game, but they're going back and doing levels and stuff like that. So I can't wait for that. Um, Super Lucky's Tale was another game that they showed. Lucky's Tale was a VR game, also a game on PC. Um, don't really care for it. I guess this is a newer version of the game. It's coming to Xbox One. I think this was a console launch exclusive. Um, don't really care for that. Ashen was another game that they showed. It has, if you've seen the game Absolver, it has that kind of art style. But this type of game is more in like the Dark Souls vein. So I'm keeping my eyes on this because I love the Souls style games. Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Neo. Like if those brutal combat games. And this looks like that, but on a smaller scale, of course, and a nice, unique art style. So Ashen, on my list of games I'm looking forward to. Life is Strange Before the Storm. Um, I heard good things about the first Life is Strange. It was free on PlayStation Plus. I downloaded that. I'm going to play through that, of course, before even looking at this. I didn't even watch the trailer because I thought that it would probably be spoilers, but this looks to be a prequel. So I'm going to wait, um, play that, and then look at the trailer for this new Life is Strange Before the Storm. Shadow of War, um, release date October 10th. We know it was delayed from August. Now they got the official release date October 10th. Game looks amazing. I'm, at this point, I don't need to see any more Shadow of War. Look, one of my most anticipated games this year. And it just continues to look really good. I love the first one. So I'm just ready to play it at this point. Um, I don't really need to see anything else. Ori was uh, another game they showed. Ori and the Will of Wisp. A sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest. Looks goddamn beautiful. Um... I didn't play Ori in the Blind Forest yet, but I do have it, have it on PC, and I'm going to get to that at some point, definitely before the second one comes out. So that comes out, I believe, this year, Ori and the Will of Wisp, and I'm looking forward to that. Wait, is it this year? Hold up. Let me get a concrete release date for y'all before I, before I go ahead and move on. Ori and the Will of Wisp, sequel. Oh, no. Actually, there's no release date yet, so maybe it is... This year, maybe it's coming out 2018. Not sure yet, but we'll find out in the future. OG Xbox games. One of my predictions for E3 this year for Xbox was that they're going to find a way to bring OG Xbox games to the console. And they did it. They talked about how they're bringing a fan favorite like Crimson Skies to be able to be played on Xbox One through the backwards compatibility. And I thought this was a huge announcement. Um, the fans did in the crowd. Yo, this announcement got the biggest applause for the whole conference. And that should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> they were losing their shits for the OG Xbox backwards compatibility. And it's cool. 
I, me personally, I don't care about backwards compatibility, but I can't deny it's the feature that every platform should have. And they're, they're doing a damn thing with this backwards compatibility stuff with the 360 stuff and now the OG Xbox stuff. That's something to be happy about and, and you can't deny that. So it'd be interesting to see. And they said like the Xbox One X will improve these games and it'll be looking better, of course, with the, um, the hardware. Now it'd be interesting to see how many Xbox games they bring over, but if the 360, you know, rollout has been anything to go by, I think it's gonna be majority of them, if not all of them will eventually be playable as backwards compatibility. Um, then Phil Spencer came back out, talked about 30 Xbox One X games from third party. We'll be getting um, updates. So whether it be 4K or textures, all that type of good stuff, we'll be getting updates on 30 games. That's pretty cool. That's, you know, a lot to start out with and hopefully the support is there continuously. Um, and then the last, but definitely not least thing they announced was that the Xbox One X is gonna be 499. <sighs> the rumor, the leak earlier today was true. I thought announcing this price at the end was a problem. If y'all recall, first, Phil Spencer was the one that came out when the Xbox One was first revealed and he announced the price of $4.99 and it was crickets. <laughs> it was barely anybody applauding for that. And this kind of felt like that because everything that they showed leading up to this I'm just like, oh, it's gonna be $3.99 because the conference, me personally, didn't wow me. So I thought maybe that, that bomb drop moment would be $3.99 Xbox One X, 4K, all this other, the best powerful console ever made and stuff like that. And $3.99 would have blew the roof off, but he announced $4.99. So it's gonna be interesting to see. I know they don't want this to be like the main Xbox that they still gonna keep the S for that. So this is only appealing to the enthusiasts. But I still think $4.99 is on the higher end. But like me personally, if they went over $4.99, it would have been a problem. But $4.99 was the max I said they would go for this. And that's exactly what they did. So I don't know. I probably won't get any get an Xbox One X because my PC, like every game they announced was pretty much Windows 10 or PC compatible. So it was no reason for me to be like, damn, like I really need to get an Xbox One because there's games I can't play on PC, but everything they showed, I could play on PC. So no reason to get an Xbox One X. But overall, I thought the conference was like a six out of 10. Um, There was no new first party IPs coming from Microsoft. Everything that was first party or uh, exclusive, we saw last year. See if these Forza, except Ori, that's new, but that's not a new IP. Oh, uh, see if these four is a Crackdown 3. Did I talk about Crackdown 3? Hold up. No, I didn't. Crackdown 3 is actually coming out this year. Um, happy to see that. Did like the demo they showed. I want to see more of that game. I'm getting a little nervous about that destruction because I thought they would give a big blow off of Crackdown 3, especially since it's coming out. What's the date for Crackdown 3? November 7. November 7, Crackdown 3 comes out. And we still haven't seen much of the game. They showed a couple minutes of gameplay and mixed in with a little trailer. So it was kind of almost like a montage a little bit. I want to see more. I want to see that destruction played in real time and all that other good stuff. So maybe we'll get some more demos going forward. But Crackdown 3 is coming out this year. But back to the 6 out of 10. No new first party IPs. Um, nothing there that really wowed me that we didn't already see before. The Anthem demo was probably the best game they showed that that game by bioware looks amazing and i can't wait to get my hands on that the visual effects um just the way the game plays the gun combat the flight combat that shit looks amazing so i can't wait to play anthem but other than that it was really nothing that blew me away especially nothing i was like oh crap i need to get an xbox for this it was nothing like that. It was just a whole bunch of games, which you can't be mad at. You can't go into this conference and say, oh, they didn't show anything. They had a big diverse lineup of games. And that's what we kind of want from Xbox. But I wanted to see more heavy hitters from them and it just wasn't there for me. Um, six out of 10 for me for this conference. I was a little bit disappointed. I ain't even gonna lie. So that's my review. I don't think if I had anything else I got to say about this. Nah, that's it, man. Uh, a little bit disappointed. Was hoping to see more new IPs, but unfortunately we didn't get that. But let me know down in the comment section what y'all thought about this conference. If you're new to the channel, would love for you to subscribe, stick around, rate the video, and I'll catch you on my next video. Peace.